That's where you're at. Went out. Dolphins, Vikings, Lions. 69% chance for the Green Bay Packers if they win their last three games to get to the postseason. Uh, we do this every week. It's a product of Bally Sports, Wisconsin. Four things to watch for. I am Mitch Widmeyer, Green Bay on the road. Christmas Day against the Dolphins, who have lost three straight but have played pretty well during that stretch. Uh, we'll jump right into it. First thing to watch for in this one, I, I, I do think this has all the makings to be a shootout. It's Joe Barry's scheme, his defense running soft zones against Tua and Mike McDaniel's offense. A couple weeks ago on a Sunday night, Miami played the Chargers, and it was one of the first times this year in a game where weather was not an issue in Los Angeles inside where the Dolphins' offense was contained for most of that game. And the Chargers did it primarily by having their corners play press coverage, press man coverage on the outside against the likes of Tyreek Hill and Waddle, two of the fastest wide receivers in the entire NFL who just both so happened to play for the Dolphins. It was a risky proposition for L.A., but it paid off. And it kind of uh, put it out there that, hey, maybe one way to try to neutralize or slow down that train that is the Miami offense is to try to play a little press coverage and get some shoves in at the line on Tyree Kill and Waddle. That is not Joe Barry's style of defense. It's not his scheme. It's not what he likes to do. Packer fans uh, like to gripe about it, and it's justified to an extent. They like to gripe and put screenshots out there on certain plays where it's like third and 15 and you can't even see a corner on the screen because they're so far back, almost towards the sticks. It happened against Philly. It happened against Tennessee. Saw it in the Dallas game. Um, there are spots throughout the year. The Giants game was a big one as well where Green Bay just played so far off and it was like pitch and catch for whoever was playing quarterback and wide receiver in those games. Um, so that'll be an interesting thing to watch. You wish that Green Bay would try to maybe go the route that the Chargers did with their model and their blueprint. But again, that's not typically how Joe Barry uh, runs the show for his defense. And so you can expect those soft zones. The offense for the Dolphins has been a wagon in large part. And the fear is that two was just going to sit back, have all day and just pick apart the zone defense for the Packers. So that's the first thing to watch for. Second thing, go to the exact opposite side here. I think Aaron Rodgers has a big opportunity to pick apart a pretty suspect Miami pass defense. Dolphins pass defense is ranked 27th in yards allowed per game at 246.3. Now Green Bay is ranked second in that same statistic, but <laughs> haven't really seen an offense quite like the Dolphins that have two premier pieces like I mentioned with Hill and Waddle but Aaron Rodgers has a real opportunity in this game to pick apart and put up plenty of points pending how the offensive line holds up doesn't look like David Bakhtiari is going to be able to go for the Packers but Zach Thomas filled in more than just admirably uh, at left tackle in Bakhtiari's absence this game like I said at the outset has all the makings of a shootout I truly truly believe if Green Bay wants to win this game, they're going to have to put up at least 30. At least 30 points to beat the Dolphins. Mentioned Miami's lost three in a row. They have a wild card spot at the moment in the AFC. Like Both teams are playing for a whole heck of a lot. Um, neither team is waltzing into the postseason. Neither team even has a spot locked in. Green Bay more desperate than Miami, but how much does that really matter? Who knows? Aaron Rodgers with Christian Watson and a healthy Romeo Dobbs and Alan Lazard. In the run game with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, cleared concussion protocol already. I think it's going to be a big spot for A-Rod to throw out one of those vintage performances against a pass defense that has struggled mightily this year. And you just break this game down and look at it through all sorts of different prisms. It has every ingredient of being a shootout in a high-scoring affair. We do it every week. Get you ready for Packers, Dolphins this week. Product of Bally Sports, Wisconsin. Four things to watch. Packers, Dolphins, Mitch Widmeyer here with you. Third thing, going back to the Green Bay defense, it's on the edge. Preston Smith played like a man possessed a week ago against the Los Angeles Rams. He had two sacks, 
peppered in a couple of more quarterback hits, and it really looked, uh, you know, Preston Smith hasn't looked old or sluggish this year by any sense of the imagination, but in the absence of Rayshon Gary, a lot of the uh, focus for opposing offenses when looking at the edge for Green Bay is now paid towards Preston Smith instead of Rayshon Gary, who piled up six sacks in eight games before tearing his ACL against the Lions earlier this year. And so it's been tough sledding at times for Preston Smith, but he had a lot of success against the Rams. And the Dolphins have a banged-up offensive line. Don't know if Armstead's going to be able to go. I think Eric Fisher's already been ruled out, or he was listed as doubtful. And with their injury report, it certainly brings up question marks for the Dolphins on that side, and it could open up the door for another big opportunity for Preston Smith. Also, don't forget about Kingsley Ignagbari. He had a strip sack last week against the Rams, and there was a play where the Rams ran a tight end screen to Enig Bari's side. And Baker Mayfield, the quarterback for the Rams, did everything he's supposed to do. He took the snap. He looked right to try to bait the defense that way before coming back to Enig Bari's side. And Enig Bari just read it like a book. He followed the tight end for the Rams out into the flat, knocked it down, nearly came up with an interception. Went not through his grasp, but had a chance at the pick. But it was such a great instinctual play for the rookie out of South Carolina who really has played pretty dang well um, with an expanded role again due to the torn ACL by Gary. I think Green Bay, they're going to have to get pressure on Tua because if Tua's allowed to just sit back there and pick apart the zone defense for Green Bay, it's going to be a long, miserable afternoon for the Packers' defense. But if Green Bay can get some pressure and try to make Tua's life just a little bit miserable or get him uh, off-platform, and a little uncomfortable, it could pay big dividends in this one. And finally, the last thing to watch for is just the urgency. Green Bay, I I mean, this is it. They have to beat the Dolphins. They have to beat the Vikings. They have to beat the Lions if they want any shot at the postseason. Mentioned if they went out, saw it on the whiteboard, 69% chance to make the playoffs if they win their last three games. There's no real room to breathe if you slip up in one of these games. They already need so much to happen. Um, And so far, especially last week, a lot of it uh, went their way uh, for Green Bay, but they need more dominoes to fall, but it's all contingent upon them winning their last three games. So you need to see that desperation, that urgency that really the Dolphins should be playing with uh, as well. And the reason I bring it up is because there were other moments this year, you know, Green Bay lost back-to-back weeks to the the Giants in London in a game where they controlled it early and then fumbled it away at the end. And then they came back home and got spanked by the Jets, who turned out to be really good on defense, but just an average offensive team this year. Another team kind of scrapping, clawing, looking uh, on the outside of the playoff picture in the AFC. But Green Bay, back-to-back losses to the New York teams early in the season. And it's it was a spot where it's like, okay, show some urgency, show some sort of like desperation Um, Not panic play, but just the urgency. And they followed it up with another dud against Washington. It was a close game, but Green Bay just looked lethargic throughout that game against the commanders that they lost. Um, There was another spot this year where Green Bay picked up a good win against Dallas and then came out and laid an egg against Tennessee at Lambeau Field on a snowy Thursday night. And it just looked disinterested from the start and didn't have the urgency. This is it. Didn't see the urgency in other spots where it was critical, like those games against Washington, Tennessee. You can point out other spots, but you have to beat the Dolphins if you want to keep your playoff hopes alive. So for Green Bay, the urgency is going to be key in this one to just play with that um, that mindset of we've got to lay it all out there and try to pick up a win. A final score time. I'm going to take the bait. I'm going to try to give you guys some hope in Packer land out there. For whatever reason, I don't think the the dream ends here for Green Bay in this 2022 campaign. I said they're going to have to score at least 30. I think they do. 35-31, Packers over Miami on Christmas in Miami. Green Bay gets the win and keeps their playoff hopes alive. Remember, you can find this on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube page, and our website. We do it every week. Product of Valley Sports, Wisconsin. Four things to watch. Enjoy the game on Christmas.